This is what you're going to see when you first open your energy grid calculator. If you haven't done so already, you're going to want to make a copy of this document so that you can make whatever changes you want to make and see what impacts those changes have on the grid. So the first thing you'll see when you open it up is this current tab. This is showing an estimate of where your electricity is coming from in your state. So it's based on state level data. It's making some approximations. Uh, it's also using the area and the population in your local region. You want to focus on these four questions. So for current grid estimates, what do you notice in the energy supply? Well, I notice that the maximum supply is about equal to the maximum demand, which is a good thing. I notice the carbon emissions are really high, and I notice the land use is given in percentages of our city area. You may notice some other things as well. Another thing that you want to pay attention to are these two measures up here. They're both green right now, which is a good thing. Um, it's telling us that the energy grid in or the electricity grid in my state is currently pretty reliable um, based on two different measures. And questions three and four will, will change that. So, for example, if I demolish a coal plant, notice... These numbers change. Um, what percentage of demand can be met if there's a winter crisis? If I don't have that coal plant to work from, fewer people are going to get electricity. Similarly, if I, if I don't actually believe that plants in my state have been winterized, um, as we know some plants in Texas weren't effectively winterized, that reduces that number even more. So anytime you see red or orange in the grid calculator, that's something that you want to pay attention to as something that you can fix. So this will get us into solutions of how to solve those problems. So if you go down here to the second tab and click on solution one, notice I have the same uh, state level data on current plants, but I also have plants that I can add to the grid. So if I go in and I get rid of that coal plant like I did before, I can then fix that problem by adding supply to the grid. So for example, if I was to add one nuclear plant, that gives me way more uh, supply than I might need, but notice what has happened to the cost. The cost has gone from $5 billion or $230 per person per year to like twice that or more than twice that. Um, so that may be a good solution because it definitely makes my grid more reliable, but it could be that cost is something that we want to pay really close attention to. Notice adding a nuclear plant and reducing the, the coal plants in my grid has drastically reduced the carbon emissions as well, which is a good thing. Um, if you want to try using uh, a renewable source such as wind or solar, if I was to say add 100,000 solar rooftop units, that can also get me close to the demand that I meet. But notice at night, I have trouble meeting the demand on the grid. So this question, for how many hours will all people have power if wind and solar drop to zero? I've got a problem here that I need to fix. One way to fix that is by using batteries. Um, each one of these is, uh, it costs about $2 million or so, um, but remember that's spread out over the entire population of the region that you're looking at. If I add one of these, it really doesn't make much of a difference. Adding one battery is not going to help my grid, so maybe I can try adding 100. Well, that only is getting me through 1.1 hours of the night. Let's try adding a thousand of these batteries. That's, that's getting us much closer. So for example, if I wanna get through more than 12 hours of nighttime, um, I would need 1,100 of these batteries. Each of them costs about $2 million each. So notice this, this has added considerably to the cost as well. It went from 6 billion to 8 billion. Still not as much as adding the nuclear plant, but a significant add, add of expense. It's your job 
to prioritize these trade-offs and uh, play around with the different values um, as you change things um, in the simulation. Uh, these values up here will change as well. One thing I need to warn you against is only change values that are in yellow. So for example, if I go over here and I try to delete something, it'll give me this warning. I never want to say okay here. I always wanna say cancel because if I make changes in yellow, um, I know that I won't make uh, make any changes that will uh, interrupt the, the calculations that the simulation is doing behind the scenes.